Okay, what we're going to do here in this lecture is we're going to go over and distinguish between organic and inorganic compounds, and then we're going to start a series on looking at inorganic groupings. Uh, and we're going to focus on carbohydrates predominantly for this one. And in the next lecture, I'll do lipids. Next lecture, I will do proteins. And then the one after that, I will do nucleic acids. So to start, we're going to look at organic versus an inorganic molecule. So we're going to start with the inorganic first. Inorganic compounds or molecules. Okay. Typically, usually, they do not contain carbohydrate, uh, sorry, carbon and hydrogen together. Okay, typically. They typically dissolve in water. And they will dissociate. Okay. And when they do this, they're going to form ions. Okay. And they are typically the electrolytes. Okay. Examples of inorganics. Are water, carbon dioxide, is CO2, <clears throat> and your salts. So, for example, sodium chloride, potassium chloride. Magnesium, chloride, etc. Okay. Those are inorganic molecules. Organic molecules okay, they do contain both carbon Typically in chains, typically in chains. <clears throat> so what this means is you'll have a molecule, it's got a carbon and 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 a carbon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And on these, you'll have various hydrogen detached. Okay, and that would be an organic molecule. It's just a chain of a carbon, chains of carbons. Okay. Now, do they dissolve in water? Eh, it depends. Okay, it depends on the type. So depending on the type, it will or will not dissolve in water. Okay. <clears throat> of the organics, most lipids will not. Most lipids will not. Okay. If it does, if it does, if it does dissolve in water, they do not, ions are not released. Okay, and they are not electrolytes. Okay. They are not electrolytes. Okay. The types here, we've, I've said them before, and the ones that you need to remember, remember because they're going to 
carry out through the rest of your, your education are the carbohydrates, we have our lipids, we have our proteins, and we have our nucleic acids. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at when we are looking at our organic molecules. Right. So we're going to spend time just talking about our carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. So let's put a little plus here. Carbohydrates. And you all know these as our sugars. Our sugars. Okay, sugars. Okay. Their structure is, is they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. So this means for every carbon, not for very, for every for every carbon inside of a carbohydrate there is one oxygen and two hydrogens All right. So if I have a sugar with two carbons, that means it has two oxygens and it has four hydrogens. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> the carbohydrates themselves, the sugars, they're they're varied. They're they're various sizes and they have various structures. There's no one one general structure for the carbohydrates. They're they're varied. But we can classify them based on how many individual sugars they have. Okay, if the uh, sugar is just one molecule, it is called a monosaccharide. Okay, a monosaccharide. Okay. It is a simple sugar. Okay. And it's typically got three to seven carbon atoms. Three to seven carbon atoms. Okay. So that means it's got three to seven oxygens and it has six to 14 uh, hydrogens. Okay. Of these, we have glucose, fructose, and galactose. So those are the big ones. Now, if we have more than one, so if we have two sugars connected together, that's called a disaccharide. Disaccharide. Oh, I spelled them saccha saccharides. I spelled saccharides wrong. CH saccharide. Okay, so it's, it's disaccharide. It is two two simple sugars Here's. combined together by a dehydration synthesis. And we will go over how that actually works. The examples of this are sucrose and maltose. Sucrose and maltose. And then 
we have polysaccharides, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, okay? And this is many, many sugars, many simple sugars, or many monosaccharides, and they're condensed again by dehydration synthesis. Of these, the important ones are glycogen, starch, and cellulose. So glycogen is a storage form of glucose in our bodies. Starch is the plant form, so potatoes, a lot of starches and potatoes. And then cellulose is an actual structural it's plant structural uh, sugar. And it's like in celery, the stuff that you can't digest in celery, that's that's the cellulose, the cellulose in there, because we can't digest it. So those are those are carbohydrates, those are the structures. So what do they do? So the function the function of a sugar is really simple. It's just energy and the storage of energy that's it energy and the storage of energy okay. there are some structural properties to carbohydrates in our bodies but predominantly predominantly in humans carbohydrates are where we get our energy from energy from they're not the only thing that will give us energy we can get energy from any of the organic molecules but in us uh, humans we like to use we like to use uh, carbohydrates predominantly as a storage i mean as a energy source all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at glucose because it's it's one of the most important so carbohydrates glucose and the reason this is important is because this is the primary sugar that we use. It is the primary sugar used for energy in humans. Okay, so that's what glucose is. So what is it? It is a six carbon molecule. And since it follows the rules of carbohydrates, that means there are six oxygens and there are 12 hydrogens. Okay. Now glucose exists, can exist in two forms. It can exist in a linear form and it can exist in a ringed form. So if we take a look at the linear form, so it's really simple, just draw six carbons, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, so then we just have to start attaching things. Okay, there's a hydrogen here, a hydroxyl here, and the third carbon, hydrogen here, hydroxyl here. I'm gonna put the hydrogen here, hydroxyl here. This one doesn't really matter that much, I just like to put it that way. And there, there. And then hydrogen here and oxygen there. Okay, so if we count them up, you can go one. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we can count the oxygen one, two, three, four, five, six. We can count the hydrogens one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are twelve. So this fits the rule. So this is what. This is what glucose looks like in the linear form. In the linear form, it's called the straight chain. Straight chain. Okay. It can also exist in what's called the ringed form. The ring form. So this is straight chain. Okay. 
And then the ring form, it literally forms a ring. So you got a carbon, carbon, carbon. And then this is where it gets thrown off. There's, a, there's our oxygen, one oxygen there. There's a carbon. There's a carbon. And this attaches to that carbon. Now, if you look at this ring, you've got one, two, three, four, you know, five carbons there. What happens is the sixth carbon's there. This is there's another carbon there. So we got we got our H, H, O H, O H itself. So here, let's bind this. O H, H. OH. And I know you're probably like, this is really boring. I don't care. I'm just showing you. I never, I will never make you draw these out. So don't, don't worry about that. Later, if you'd ever take a biochemistry course, you'll probably be required to do that, but not for us. Okay. So now the difference is here, as you see this double bond right here between this carbon and this oxygen, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist there. Okay, so this double, sorry, the double bonds, the oxygen is not double bonded to any carbons inside of the ringed form, in the ring form. So where does the ring form? It is between the double bond of an oxygen and a carbon itself. So there's no double bond there. So that's the difference. Now, it's not important to know, you know, when, when is it linear and when is it not? It usually is, a, usually it's in the linear form. Okay, then the, no, sorry, usually it is in the ringed form, not not often in the linear form. So naturally exists in the ring form, but that's that's not important. I'm just showing that it can exist in two forms. Okay, so now that's, this is glucose. I mean, that, that is glucose. I mean, this is what your body uses to get its energy. Now, when we talk about the cell and we talk about uh, how we make ATP, we're going to be revisiting this and we're going to see how we use this molecule in order to get energy, okay? Because you just don't take glucose and you poof, you get energy from it. You actually convert this glucose through a very complex mechanism to make ATP in the end, okay? So that's, that's glucose. Now, let's take a look at how we store glucose, what it looks like when it's stored. So we've already said that glycogen is the human, human storage form. Oops, let me change my... Glycogen. is the storage form of this. And so basically what it is, is you take your rings, you take your rings, so you got your oxygen here. Okay, so there are rings, so make sure one. Yep, that's pretty much. And then what you do is you just bind these together. So this is a glucose, this is a glucose, together and if you do that over and over and over again you get glycogen okay so glycogen is nothing more than a bunch of glucoses that have been stuck together that have been stuck together okay so that's that's all that is we should make a bond between these there so that actually makes more sense. Okay, so that's it. So now the question would be like, well, how does it actually happen? How do I actually combine these things? And you use dehydration synthesis. Dehydration. To make larger carbohydrates. Okay. So now if you remember from the bind, from the binding, uh, the, the uh, chemical reaction lectures, sorry, the chemical reaction lectures, you remember chemical reaction is just a synthesis that removes H2O. Okay. So it's a dehydration. We're taking, we're taking water from it. So I'm going to show you this. We're going to draw this out. And we're going to use, and we're going to make sucrose. We're going to make sucrose. So that's table sugar. Now, sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. Okay. So I'm going to draw out glucose and fructose. So oxygen. Okay. 
Okay, so. Okay, yeah, I'm not talking much because this is, I have to actually think to remember what this is. Okay, so this is glucose. Okay. okay. Now, if I combine this with fructose, which is a five carbon sugar, so the oxygen here, Okay, OH. Okay, so let's do, let's do some explaining about these. So these little lines, so these little diagrams I'm showing. So if you see this, so if you see me draw this right here. Actually, let me just do that better. Let me just draw a square. This is great. Now let's say I have a molecule of carbon and it's shaped like a square. So at every one of these little points right here, this means carbon. That means a carbon. Okay, that's a carbon. The, all the all the angles. That's called the line drawing. Line drawing. So if I have a line drawing like this, every one of these little points at that it's a carbon. We just imply that this is carbon. Okay. And when we draw it just bare like that, we assume that this carbon has nothing but hydrogens attached to it. Okay, so now what if I were to do this? That means I've got an oxygen attached to the carbon sitting right there. Or if I draw like an N, that means I've got a nitrogen attached to that carbon right there. And what this does is it represents the carbon, the carbon backbone, the carbon chain itself. And with using that line diagram, you can you can make up all the all the shapes that carbon can do. So if I have like you know. So I can do one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's my six, my ring carbon with six carbons and a nice ring like that. So that's what the line drawing is. So again, don't don't get fooled by it. I'm not going to make you draw the line drawings. And if you do, I will give them to you so you can do this. So what we're what we're going to do, what we really want to illustrate here is we want to actually illustrate how we're going to combine glucose, and this is fructose glucose and fructose to make sucrose okay so I'm going to draw out sucrose I'm going to skip pretty much everything else I'm just going to keep all this okay. and so if you look at these two to bind bound together this is sucrose. Sucrose. So you can see here, this is our glucose here. And on the other side, we have our fructose. Okay, and you can look at them structurally. They're pretty much the same thing. But we have this binding them together. We have this oxygen binding them together. So what I have done, what you've done, is if you take a look at here, let's go back to the reactants let's go back to the reactant side if you look at this right here this oh oh and if i take this h off okay if i take oh and h off what am i removing what are you removing remember water the chemical formula is h 2 o so if i look at here that is an oh that is one oxygen, one hydrogen, and if I take this hydrogen off, if I take that hydrogen off, that is a hydrogen plus a hydrogen, OH plus H equals H2O. So what I've done is I you clip the OH off of one of these molecules at the end, and you clip one of the hydrogens off of the OH group, the hydroxyl group, and what that does, and if you see here, this lowly oxygen 
is left in green. So what this the oxygen does is it will it is the binder of the two. It holds the two together. Okay, so that's how a dehydration synthesis works. You remove an oxygen, the OH from one group, one hydrogen from another. Sorry, the OH from one molecule, a hydrogen from another. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to bring the two molecules together into a larger molecule. Now, when you eat table sugar, when you eat sucrose, you actually end up breaking it down. You actually break it down. And <clears throat> if you remember, that's called a hydrolysis. So going in this direction, moving in this direction right here, Okay, going from glucose to fruit, glucose and fructose to sucrose. This is called a dehydration synthesis. Okay, now if I were to go the other way, like that, this is called a hydrolysis. Okay, actually, I need to put the water over here. Okay, plus water. So if I go if I make the larger molecule, it's called a dehydration synthesis. If I go back, if I go back the other way, it's called a hydrolysis. It's called a hydrolysis. Okay. This is how your body breaks and puts things together 99.9% .9 of the time. If I want to break apart an organic molecule in the body, I'm going to use a dehydration synthesis in the story. If I want to build a molecule, if I want to make something larger, okay, I am going to use, sorry, sorry, let me, let me phrase it again. In the body, if I want to make something larger, if I want to make something larger, I am going to use a dehydration synthesis. Right? universal across the board pretty much 99% not universal but 99% of the time if i want to break something down break something down i have to use a hydrolysis and that is it okay now to summarize and to finish up to finish up okay let's just do a simple simple summary of carbs in the body okay so mono, the monosaccharides, we got glucose and fructose. The primary function is energy. Okay. And the body makes them where they, where do you get them? Where do you get them? The body, manu body, body manufactures them. Okay. And from food. Okay, our disaccharides, sucrose, lactose, maltose. Okay, what are they used for? Energy. Okay. And they have to be broken down. And then the polysaccharides, glycogen, storage, okay. where you find them, what do they do, you know, they are found in cells, particularly the liver and muscle. Okay. That's just a quick summary of the carbs in the body. So next, and again, this is very long, and I apologize, but um, it is what it is. So carbs, carbohydrates, sugar, how you make bigger carbs is dehydration, dehydration synthesis, how you break them down as a hydrolysis, and they're used for energy source. So next we will we'll go over lipids, and that is all for this one.